If you're one of those people that's starting over, like say you're 30 or 40 years old, you're in your second career or second chapter of your life, my recommendation is to read as much book as possible. Cancel out the distractions, stay focused, narrow down on the vision to say, hey, listen, this is exactly what I want to do. And in the beginning stages, the vision is not clear. So if you're the type of people that's turning around, let's say you lose your job, or let's say you were down a certain career path and you figure out this is not for you, or you're going through some life changes, you had a divorce, you want to be able to identify where you at, be clear and accept that the fact that this is happening to you. And I think a lot of people find it unfair and they tend to say this is not fair what's going on. Even if you're the type of person that did everything right, things do happen. First, you have to identify that life isn't fair and this is happening and this is my situation. But next, you want to research as much as you can about the thing you want to tackle because it's not enough time in the game to try to figure out everything on your own right now, especially if you're making a transition into a new industry or you're just making a 360 and you want to do something completely different outside of your norm. But you have to learn from professionals, like right? getting mentors, getting coaches. I know it's going to be challenging, right? Because especially you might find a mentor that's a little bit younger than you and you find that to bruise your ego a little bit, right? But my advice is you can learn from anybody. It doesn't matter who it is. Somebody has something to offer. Even if that advice is not good, you know not to do it for the next time, right? Or maybe you went through that advice already and you know that, okay, this is not the person for me because the advice that they get, they are giving me, I already went through it. So I'm not trying to go down that path again. The importance here is to focus on learning as much as possible from other people. Read books, go to seminars. The purpose I would go to seminars is to engage with other people because there's so many information out there right now that you can actually learn from. Once you start getting in these seminars and these rooms, the benefit of it is really to network. The information may be the same. They might have some additional information that's going to add value and typically they do but the primary reason that i would go is always to engage my thing is try to network as much as you can because everybody's vibrating at that same frequency everybody after the same thing and it gives you like the sense of energy and the sense of i want to compete the problem is when we leave those environments we tend not to follow up not to take the advice not to call the person right that we got in contact with my second advice is keep a chart of the people that you're engaging with and seeing what values you can provide them. What is it that they're doing right now that you can add value, that way you can connect. When you're doing a value conversation, you just try to figure out, hey, what are you into? What are some of your challenges? What are the things that you need to accomplish? Try to figure out those things during the conversation. And as you're conversing with them, you're actually learning. You gather all that data, you come back, you do your due diligence, and then you call them back, follow up, give them that value proposition. Hey, I noticed that from our conversation, you were saying that you were missing this. I have the opportunity here I would love to present to you that can resolve that situation. So these are the things that you want to make sure. Number one, learn as much as you can. Get the books, go to the seminars, but follow up, follow up with add values, follow up with value propositions that's going to make a person be interested because you already spoken to them along those lines of the problems that they're trying to find a solution for. Third thing I would say is try not to get into a rut because when things are not going well, when you're used to things at this level and things are not moving at that pace as you would like, you have to be somewhat patient in, in terms of allowing things to manifest on its own. Try not to get in a rut. Try to understand that this is part of the process. This is the journey. I'm not saying not to do anything. What I'm saying is as you're doing the thing, keep in mind that you're starting from scratch. So this is something that you're building and you got to make sure that you keep that in the forefront of your mind because mindset is everything. If you get in a rut, it's hard to see clearly the opportunities because everything around you is depressing. You're looking at things that are not going well. You're looking at the things that went wrong. You're looking at what other people have. And I want to tell you, everybody stumbled at some point. So I had my cousin. He filed for bankruptcy. And this was a couple of years back. But he still had his job. He still had things. He was able to figure out, make some payments, did whatever he could. Finally, and I'm looking at my cousin now, it took 10 years to get back ahead again since filing for bankruptcy, to build his credit up, to do all these things that he did. It left a stain on him, but he was able to get out of that, still was able to get a nice car he owns a nice mercedes a huge house which is has a lot of land so it's not impossible to turn things around it's just going to require some time and if you gauge it right if you look at the time horizon and say okay i'm looking to make this happen within the next uh, five years to ten years if you give yourself 
that time of saying that's how long it's gonna take it takes a little bit of the stress off because you're not focusing on right away but if you don't have a timeline in terms of where you're gonna land it's gonna be stressful and I just wanted to share that